Welcome into Phil's Tax Hacks and Other Retirement Facts with CPA and Personal Financial Specialist, Phil Putney. Now let's get rolling with today's show. Hey everybody, welcome into Phil's Tax Hacks and Other Retirement Facts with Phil Putney and myself here to talk about retirement planning next steps and are you in one of these three categories, the unsure, the confident, or the certain? Uh, I think we probably all want to be in the certain, but you know, yeah. it's harder to get there. So that's the topic this week on the podcast. Well, we'll maybe, friend. maybe not. I mean, that's the, we'll, we'll touch on that one. That, that's an interesting one. So that's a good point. How are you? You doing all right? Doing good. Doing good. Yeah. We are into May. So. We, we are into May. Yeah, and, and you, I don't know if you can hear it or not, but they, as soon as we start this, they start mowing the yard. Of so. course they do. Yeah. <laughs> It's like, are you kidding me? Seriously. Yeah. It's like, thanks a lot, guys. Don't you know I'm doing a podcast in here? That's that's right. That's all right. We'll make it work. So let's jump in and talk about these. I said, like I said, Phil, we got uh, three categories here that I think a lot of people, maybe most people, kind of gen, you know, generally fall into, right? When they yep. come in and see a financial professional such as yourself. You know, and it's not just like you know, f- feeling a certain way about any one thing. It's just kind of I think the overarching feel of um, I don't know how to do this, right? So yeah, yeah. Start, we'll kind of start with that one. It's the I have no idea if I can retire category, and that may not be just money, right? It right. Could be a number <clears throat> of things. I just have no idea how to do it. Like, how do I retire? How do I turn these things I've saved into into paychecks? Right. Or, or what do I do with my time? Right. So there could be a lot that fits in the I have no idea. So what's some things to think about? Yeah, I mean, saving for retirement is pretty straightforward. I mean, there's only a couple of moving parts. You know, how much can I put away? What the options I have at the the 401k that I, you know, or company plan, whatever it is that you're putting into is kind of the main options. Right. You know, but as you get to the point of retirement, it all changes. And it starts with what does it look like? You know, what what is your retirement vision? What do you want to do? You know, I mean, are you a a pretty, um, you know, stay at home you know, kind of a I don't want to do anything type of retirement. I mean, that's a whole totally different scenario. Yeah, that's right. Stay by the pool, you know, just like, kind of like relax. Me. You got everything you want at home. That's great. Nothing wrong with that. That's awesome. You know, that's right. going to be a lot less expensive retirement than, you know, my favorite hobby is golf. And now that I've got, you know, time, I'm going to golf six days a week and I'm going to, you know, to Florida and to Arizona and I'm going to do all this travel around whatever your hobby is. I mean, that's a totally well, different got, retirement. Uh, so you've got one of those big campers. Matter of fact, you're getting, yep. taking yours in for some servicing. We were just chatting about that before we got started. Yeah. Uh, several of my friends in the Michigan area, it's, it's funny. They have these campers and then they just go camp in Michigan. Yeah. And like, why don't you take it other places? Not- well, we take it a couple other places. I but know yeah, you do, but I've got a few friends that never <laughs> take it anywhere. They and, and, and actually, my nephew rented a a campground. Like I guess it's a seasonal thing. I guess. Or yep. Whatever. Yeah, we've got and a seasonal it's site. Eight miles from his house. I'm like. <laughs> What's the point? It's like going on vacation, right? Our, ours is, it's there. It's 45 minutes away. So it's a little yeah. bit different. But. But again, that's what they want to do, right? So right. they need a lot fee and, you know, all these, yep. I mean, there's all these little things. So it's all part of the question of what do you want retirement to look like? Right. I mean, it, it starts with what is that income st- lifestyle today? You know, and that's, right. this is probably the, one of the biggest mistakes I see in retirement, especially somebody that doesn't have maybe as active of a, re- of a retirement plan. Mm-hmm. You know, as they start thinking of retirement and they just start adding up, well, I see my utility bills or this and, you know, right. it, it, it go through and it's like, oh, I only need like 3000 a month to live on, you know, but you're, you're yeah, making 120 a year right now. It's like, okay, wait a minute. Let's just have the discussion really quick on this because things aren't quite lining up. Right. There, there's something missing here. So you're making a hundred grand now and you think it's only going to cost you three. So you should have a ton of money saved and you don't. Why? That's right. Where does it go? At the end of the day, the money you make goes one of two places. You spend it or you save it. If you can't show me where it's saved, you spend it. It's lifestyle, which is nothing wrong with that. But sure. don't make that mistake of underestimating. You say, oh, I need three a month. This is awesome. Well, okay. Yeah. So then you, you got the lifestyle figured out. Now mm-hmm. you got to figure out how you're paying for it with, with the income streams, right? Right. Yeah. So it's kind of the steps. What do I need? What does that look like? You know, and then the next, what income streams do I have? Social Security is probably the, the main one for most people. Right. Maybe you have a pension. Um, so figuring those out, what's the best option for those income streams compared to the need you have. And then if there's a shortfall from that, well, hopefully you've saved some money. You've got some retirement assets to help make up for that shortfall. I mean, that's one one right? I mean, right. It's, it's just kind of basic, money. basic steps to go through it, yeah. you know, and now obviously there's a lot more to that and, and, you know, blending those together, optimizing the social security, minimizing taxes, all that plays into it. But that's kind of the simple math to get to the 
Yeah, that, do I have enough? That's the nuance, Phil, right? That's right, the nuance right. of the fine plant tuning and the planning, really. But right. the structure, if you feel like you, I have no idea, well, what do you have, right? So if you have some of those basics, I mean, the basic way it would work is you have Social Security and maybe you have a pension and then right. a shortfall difference, and that's what the money we've saved goes towards, right? And that's, right. So how do you turn that into it? All those kind of steps. That's where you get in and have the plan. So right, the, the overall plan. Yep, right. and it kind of leads the next person. So right. So maybe you're you're the second person, which is the I think I have enough money mm-hmm. kind of thing. So we'll go to this kind of person where it's the I've done a pretty decent job. I feel pretty good about it, but I really right. I'm not a hundred percent. And again, this is the whole important thing of stopping in and seeing a financial professional is because so many of them come in and they sit down and they find out they're in better shape than they thought. They they're in right. that I think. I can, or they're in that I totally don't think I can retire at all camp, and right. they're pleasantly surprised to go, huh, I'm better than I thought I was. Yeah, and this is where I find most people fit is, you know, they think they, they've done a good job saving. They they think they're okay. They think they're ready, right. you know, and um, I've met with several clients in this scenario. They're, you know, two, three years out. They're starting that process, which is great. You don't want to wait till, you know, hey, I put in my retirement pay- papers and <laughs> next week's the day. You know, I think I better start thinking about how this is going to work. Now, it's the wrong strategy. Have a plan ahead of time. You know, but working with these guys, a lot of times it's the scenario that, you know what, you're actually in a position that you could retire today if you want. Yeah. You know, you plan for three more years. That's great. You know, nothing wrong with waiting. I mean, working a little longer only helps the plan. You right. know, it ends up yeah. more assets you you gather, yeah, you don't that. spend from those assets for two or three, two or three years. I mean, it just makes it last even that much longer. But so you got that knowledge base, right? So you're solidifying right. that you're switching from that. I think I can to, I know yep. I can, which is super empowering. Right. I mean, it just takes the pressure off, you know, and I always joke, I said, Hey, now if the boss takes you off, you just put the two week notice in and you're done. You know, so <laughs> <laughs> it's no longer, I have to go to work. It's oh, I can work if I want, you know, but right. it, it's an option at this point. And so, to me, that's retirement, right? Yeah. It, retirement isn't I'm done. Retirement is I've saved enough. I'm at the position that now I'm working because I either enjoy it or I, you know, I want to build up a little bit more to have, you know, extras that we can do in retirement, whatever it is, but it's more optional at that point. Well, let's talk a little bit about some of the steps in in this particular category, Mm -hmm. like rate of return, for example, because for the last number of years, Phil, we've seen people be able to really enjoy great rates of return because the market has been fantastic. But with that came a little bit, you know, of that greed monster and trying to push for more. And now obviously the last 18 months has been pretty tough. We've seen a a lot of volatility back. And so you really have to kind of ask yourself, like, okay, what is a reasonable rate of return and what do you need to drive that plan? So to that point, if you're in that, I think it can retire category, you go in and you get a strategy put together and you see that you're in good shape and you need, I don't know, let's say 5% or a 6% return to to Mm -hmm. make your plan work, then why are you risking more for a 10% return? Or one of these people that just say, oh, I got to have 12 or it's not good enough. And it's like, but if it, if you don't need it, you're just exposed to more risk, right? Right, right. Yeah, and that's where you, especially when you get into risk, there's two sides to risk. There's your comfort, you know, worth risk, your tolerance, let's call right. it. Right. You know, what are your, what are your, what's your pain point? You know, with the higher risk, obviously becomes more downside risk as well. You know, higher return, more downside risk. You have that volatility. You may be comfortable with that, but to your point, if running the math, you only need a 5%. Why take the risk, right? I mean, because you're, yeah. there, I, I always say in retirement, the the downside is going to hurt worse than the upside helps. Right. I mean, it's just the having that downside, especially when you're spending money, that compounding effect on the downside is way worse than getting the upside, you know, and you don't want to yeah. take that risk. Yeah. And, and you can with some of the hard. money. I, I get it, right? I mean, for many yep. people, it's hard to go, yeah, but if I can get 10, why wouldn't I? Right. And right. that, that's the age old debate that we, we, you know, the greed monster kind of gets. Oh, hold. absolutely. But again, make the plan, like find out what you need to drive the plan and then right. you can kind of finagle. And I mean, that's where sequence of returns comes into play. We've talked about this before, you know, understand how this return sequence of returns affects you in retirement mm-hmm. versus when you're saving for retirement. It's a totally different game. Yeah. Different. You know, the, the buy and hold concept, Saving for retirement works because you're not touching the money. You can ride through ups and downs. When you get to retirement, you're spending it. It changes the whole picture. The math is different. You know, it just works differently. Same math. It just works differently and potentially against you. So, 
you know, and with that, you know, the, the another mistake, or I would say caution that I would have in this area is don't overestimate the returns. Mm. You know, even if you are an, a more aggressive investor, you know, comfortable with that, don't estimate an 8%, you know, right. don't estimate a 6 7% maybe even, you know, Especially personally, we use five, right? Yeah. I, I would rather err on the more conservative side, because if, you know, I always look at it this way, what, what if we're wrong? Yeah. You know, so if, if I'm estimating it at, at an 8% return and the plan works and I'm just making it, everything's working good. So it's a good plan. Well, it's great. But what happens if we don't get eight? Well, yeah. If you think you're, if so, you're in the, I think I can category and you're right. like, well, I think I can. And if we get 8% a year for the next 15 years, we'll be okay. That's a heck of a game. That, right? That's yeah. You're, you're putting yourself at way, way, way too much risk. Yeah. Right. Okay. You know, if you do a 5% and you get eight, well, that's even, that's a better discussion. Sure. Now, now it's a totally different option. You can spend more. There's, you know, it's, it's a, a much better option yeah. than you're five years into this. I planned eight. I only got five. Yeah. You know, and now the money's not going to last as long. So we either dramatically change the rest of your lifetime for retirement or you go back to work or, I mean, it's, none of the good options you want to talk about at that yeah, point. So that's a great point. That's a great way of looking at that. Yeah. Cause if you, if you make the extra, then you can look at legacy options. Right. Stuff. And I mean, the point with that too, is it's not a set it and forget it, right? It's, it's a, what's my assumptions? Where are we at now? Let's look at it this year, next year, every year, revisit this just to make sure are we on track? What's going on? Do we need to make some adjustments? So, okay. All right. So the first one, I have no idea. That's the unsure. Uh, yep. The confident is, uh, I think I can, right? But right. Yep. And then there's the certain, and that's the, I know I have enough money to retire. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's fantastic. So how do we, how did you determine that? And yep. what are some key kind of steps to think about? Because this, there are some other things to really think about. If you for sure have enough to retire, that's fantastic. But right. it's not like, it's just like, well, I've, I've got enough. I mean, and I guess unless you're talking like crazy money, right? Right. Yeah. Uh, you know, I got $75 million. Yeah. You're probably in great shape. Of course. Yeah. I mean, you probably didn't need to work to begin with. So. If you, if you bought an Island, maybe, I don't know, but right. Anyway. Well, in retirement savings, it's all relative to spending, right? I mean, that, that's the, that age old question. Well, how much do I need? I, I have no idea. How much do you spend? Right. You know, right. what's the shortfall? The point we talked about on point one. Yeah. I mean, that, that really is what you need to understand. That's the relative number of how much do I have to, you know, save to right. get to retirement. So, and that would be my first question for this group. And, you know, often in this group, it, it's how did you come up with that? You know, do, don't be overconfident, you know, make sure, did you have, did you run the scenario at, at an 8% return? And, you know, based on all that, yeah, I'm good. Mm -hmm. You know, or is it truly, yeah, I know I have enough because, you know, my shortfall is very small. You know, I'm only going to spend two, 3% of my overall nest egg each year okay. or less. Yeah. yeah. You're probably in a pretty good position at that point. So then maybe you're you looking know? at some more fine details, uh, you know, tax. I mean, all of these things should be in all three categories too. Yes. But these are the folks that maybe walk in the door saying, okay, look, I know I have enough, but I need to talk about taxation or I need to talk about something like right. that. Yeah, because I mean, you know, you have enough based on what current tax laws they are today. But what happens if it changes? You know, what happens if tax rates do go up? True. You know, what happens if one of the spouses passes away? You know, how does that change the plan? So there's all these things you always have to look at. And this is at all levels, right? It's the, we're talking yeah. today kind of where people think they're at. No matter right. what stage you're at, you need to walk through all these different strategies and, and steps along the way. You know, what do I need? What are my sources? You know, and now how do I best distribute the money that I have in the most tax efficient manner, then hedging against some of these risks of, you know, yeah, okay. taxes going up. How do I hedge against that? Or even you know, something as simple as a raise, right? Like, give right. Your like I, you know, we all need raises. And you need well, inflation. I mean, it's, you know, you've planned X amount of inflation in your plan, hopefully. I mean, that's another area I see that people often think, you know, they get used to this, you know, sub 2% inflation we have for so many years that all of a sudden, hopefully inflation is starting to ring a bell again and people are realizing that oh, it doesn't it always, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't always go that way. Right. You know? So, I mean, you've got to plan for that inflation in retirement. How do you keep up with that? Giving yourself a raise, you know, for that, or just, you know, you wanted to, to take another trip a year. You really like whatever it is you decided yeah. you like cruising, you know, so you want to take another cruise this year. So well, whatever, whatever legacy, that happens you, to be. You know, so yeah, I mentioned that one earlier, right? Maybe maybe you find out at the end of it that you do have a lot more than you're you're probably gonna 
you ever get to, and you mm-hmm. want to change the legacy plan. You know, maybe it started out absolutely as, as we talked about, like these plans ebb and flow. Maybe early on it started out that uh, you know the legacy was going to be small, but because of proper planning and some other things, the legacy could be bigger, right? So a plan is not a set it and forget it. It's just a strategy yeah. to help you at that particular moment in time, and that's going to kind of you know again, it's going to ebb and flow and change just like life is. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's a path to start walking down. I mean, it it answers some of the big questions up front. Can I do it? Does it work? Do I have enough? You know, how how is it going to fit together all the different pieces? Now you start walking down that path and you have to revisit it every year based on changes in your life. I mean, has there been something different in your life? Do you need more? You know, has something medically happened where life expectancy has now changed? You know, tax rates. I mean, there's all these different moving parts every single year that you have to reevaluate your plan based on those and just walk, keep walking down that path. And how do you make better improvements to that each year along the way, just tweaking it? So, yeah. So, I mean, retirement isn't, um, I think, as easy as most people think. You know, it's one of those, oh, how hard can it be, right? I just turn the income on, just... Yeah. You know, call call my uh, custodian, whoever that is, Fidelity Schwab, whatever, and say, "Oh, just start sending me a thousand bucks a month." You know, yeah. Well, yeah, you can do that, but you know, is there a strategy behind that? You know, where are they pulling that money from? What's the tax consequences of that? How do you know? How does all this fit together? So, is it going to affect my Social Security and how much money I'm taxed? Exactly. It's yeah. yeah. There's all these moving parts that it you know as you start to move one, it changes the other and. Um, it's like chess, right? You got to kind of build the strategy around how does this work? There you go. Yeah, for sure. So whether you are are unsure, whether you are confident or whether you are certain, it's still a good idea to have a plan and a strategy to help you get through the different uh, obstacles and hurdles along the way. Mm -hmm. So if you need some help, as always, reach out to Phil or a qualified professional like Phil. He is a personal financial specialist and a CPA. and He's been helping families for many, many years. So you can find him online at philstaxhacks.com. That's philstaxhacks.com where you can catch past episodes of the podcast. You can also redirect back to his main website and uh, reach out for some information. 248-888-7530 if you'd like to call as well. 248 248- 888-7530. That's going to do it this week. Phil, thanks for hanging out, my friend. All right. Have a good week. Next time, right here on Phil's Tax Hacks and Other Retirement Facts. Phil? Investment advisory services offered through AFS Wealth Management. The content of this program is provided for informational purposes only and is not a solicitation or recommendation of any investment strategy. Investments and or investment strategies involve risk, including the possible loss of principal. There is no assurance that any investment strategy will achieve its objectives.